I want to give a few examples of some gate signatures so you can get an idea of what you're looking for. And I'm going to try and show both the graph, if you're graphing, and also the underlying data. If you remember from the graphing special topics, this is the location of the dial during the scan, and this is the reading I got from the right contact, the sloped contact point. And we can see that there is a gate signature, and this is your archetypical gate signature. You suddenly you have a, a, a pretty consistent height. This is your contact point, so it's a proxy for height. Height of the wheel pack, then there's a sudden change, and then it comes back. And this is your most classic gate signature. And if you plot it, it seems really obvious that there is a gate right here. But if you look at the data, you'll see, this is why I, I don't graph very often, is we're getting very consistent results. 5, 2, 5, 1, 4. We've got a, you can see it's kind of descending a little bit here. But they're all very close to, to 5. So we got, you know, 5 and a quarter down to, you know, 4.9. So not very much difference. And it's a slow change. These small changes don't, don't really mean anything. That's just variability. But you'll see as we come up here to 30, at 30 we're at 5. Remember this is probably millimeters or centimeters on, on a ruler, so this is not the actual dial location. Um, we suddenly go from 5 to 5.8, and if we go back here we'll just ignore the 33 because that's an amplification, but 5.9 and the 36 it drops back down. So very sudden change in height, a much lower height. Although this graph shows it higher, it's actually a much lower height. And then it, it comes back down. And you can see that just by looking at these numbers because you're like, oh, these are all about five. And suddenly I get something that's almost six. Huge difference. So this is a great indication that there's a um, gate here. Classic indication. Suddenly goes up, stays high, comes back down. And you can see that both in the graph or if you're just writing the numbers down. And this is why I just write the numbers down. I can see, it's really easy to see these, these type of signatures in the data. Here's another example. Exactly the same is happening. You can see the gate signature here. It's a pretty constant. Then suddenly it goes up and it comes back down. And again, in this direction, up means it is a lower. And that's just because I'm reading these numbers off the wheel pack. Or sorry, off the, the ruler with my little piece of wire. And these numbers are the location during the scan between 0 and 100, and then the, the, the ruler marking, my ruler marking. Um, I don't have the actual underlying data. I typically just use a piece of an old envelope from a bill or something and write the numbers on that, and then I recycle it afterwards. So I don't tend to keep the data around. Um, but this is, you can see, we, we do have some, this is not a gate signature here. This is just the wheel pack probably going from one wheel to another in terms of shadowing. And you just get these slow um, changes in height. This might be considered a little bit of a gate. If there is no other, um, there wasn't a really great one, you might look at this as a, 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 um, a signature and actually on this particular run 50 is one of the other numbers in the combination the other one here was here at um i think 83 but this is just showing this is mostly a mostly shadowed um gate so this isn't big enough of a difference for it to really for you to really pay more attention to that especially when you have a really strong indication here and you will sometimes get these little, these little changes, these little jumps around. But you can see this one is going from a pretty constant height to a new height. So it's probably just a wheel moving from one wheel shadowing one wheel to another. But here's the, your classic gate signature. It's, it's pretty constant. There's a sudden change that with it getting lower, the wheel pack getting lower. And then suddenly it goes back down to normal. So that is another classic gate signature here. But this one has a little bit more variation in it. I thought I'd just show you what you might see in yours. Again, this one here is not a gate signature, nor are these the sort of changes here. And this one is shadow. This one is actually a gate being shown. But in reality, you would not, this is not a big enough difference for you to say that that's a gate. And these ones here, there's just, it's, it's 
going that's going up and then staying up. So that's typically not a gate. It can be a gate. If you had nothing else on this, so this wasn't here, you may assume that there is a gate signature here. And then you would do your high low test. And if there isn't a gate there, that would show that there that that that, that your high low test wouldn't show which wheel was on. So you wouldn't you wouldn't be able to see this. So classic gate signature here goes up and down. Okay, here's a third one. This is the most complicated one. Um, you can see that there, there's a gate signature right here. You can see it comes straight up and then comes back down. Um, we'll talk about the second hump here in, in, in a second here. But this one right here where it's just sort of slowly working its way down, that isn't indicating a gate signature. And of course, these sort of flat areas with just little little changes aren't. This is kind of an interesting location here because it comes up and then it comes down and then it comes back up again and kind of stays stays high after that. And in this case, these higher numbers are indicating a lower location on the wheel pack. It's just has to do with the orientation of my of my um, ruler that I'm using with the wire. But this is the classic example of the of the gate signature and the second hump I'm not sure exactly why this happened, but it is it isn't a gate signature. There isn't a gate here. I think it's probably just the edge, and there's some wheel shadowing that's changing between the two, or there's a discontinuity in the wheel, just a, a sharp change at the at the very edge of that gate. Something happens, and I've only seen this on this particular combination. Every time you change the combination on your on your safe and you re-manipulate it you will get very different graphs, which is a really nice thing. You just buy one lock, change the numbers on it, and you'll get a whole new set of graphs and a whole new manipulation. So it is a good investment. You know, you may pay $100 for your safe uh, mounted safe lock, but you get lots of use out of it. And this is, this again, a classic example of the safe here, of, sorry, of the gate here. But there is a second pseudo, pseudo signature here. And... When you do the high low test, you don't you only see the results for this first one. The second one is a false a false gate. It just looks like there's a gate, and if so, if you see this, you really you need to do your your high low tests on both of these and check it out. But we have the actual underlying data here, and you can see the gate signature because we're just by looking at the data we're we're getting five five one five two five three, and suddenly it peaks up to five five. So that's this sort of jump right here. And then it comes back down. And then it goes back up and kind of stays up. So again, this is where your gate would be right here.